Hello and welcome to Stop Emailing Documents, the basics of document collaboration and version control in Microsoft Office 365. I love the header. Uh, we said that very intentionally because there's so many times that we, in the past, that we were asking for feedback on documents and we end up emailing them out to people. And then the person who emails them out gets all these different documents back and uh, they struggle to integrate and, and uh, uh, the feedback into a, back into source documents. Such a huge effort. So um, anyway, that's a little bit of the problem we're going to be solving today. My name is Nathan Austin. I'll be presenting and Stephanie Kingsley is uh, producing behind the scenes. We're going to guide you through uh, some of the basic document collaboration challenges and opportunities that you have in Microsoft 365. All right, so first of all, uh, this purpose of this session is a how to. I am going to talk about some of the challenges, some of the capabilities, and then demonstrate those capabilities. I am going to move relatively quickly. Um, the reason we do record these so that you can go back and watch them at a later date, share them with other colleagues if they're having these challenges. It's one of the reasons why we're doing these is so that it's tactical. This is how you do it. And if you're struggling with it, come back to the video, pause it, rewind it, whatever you need to do. Uh, but we're going to go, like I said, relatively quickly through the information so that uh, you can reference it later. Uh, secondly, we're going to review some of the common challenges that we all have relative to document collaboration and some that, you know, if you were in the room with me, uh, you'd probably be nodding your heads or or I might ask you to shake your hand. Hey, has anybody had this problem? Hopefully we're going to hit some chords, strike some chords there as far as um, challenges that you've had in the past or that maybe you're currently still facing and dealing with. Uh, then, like I said, I'll go through demonstrate and I'll show you how to do these things, some of these capabilities to multi-user edit and, um, and collaborate on documents as well as some of the gotchas. There's some nuances and some things that I want to make sure that you're aware of as you start going down this path. Uh, and then finally, we'll wrap it up with some recommended action items as well as open it up for questions. So just so you know, um, this session will last about 30 minutes. We're going to pack as much information into that 30 minutes as possible. Uh, and then uh, at the end, we are going to open it up for Q&A. However, I would like to definitely recommend if you have a question, even right now, if you have a question, go ahead and use the Q&A panel on your screen and pop in a question. Um, it's something that Stephanie might be able to answer offline, or it's something that we can then bring up at the end or throughout the whole presentation, whichever, whenever you come think of a question, by all means, please put it in there and we'll, we'll work to address it afterwards. But for the first 30 minutes, we're just gonna knock through and, and really pack in as much content as possible. Okay, so, but before we do that, I always like to take one minute about my tech. Um, you know, ultimately we are a small and medium business technology consulting organization. Um, you know, we, we target the, the small and medium business. So under 500 employees is typically the, the type of companies we work with. Uh, ultimately over the last, we've been in business for 20 years now, as of October was our 20th year anniversary. So we're excited to hit that milestone. But over those 20 years, you know, we've learned um, a few things about some standards that we know can achieve consistent results for our clients. It doesn't mean it's the only way to do things, but it's just the way that we've found that uh, we can achieve success if we and our clients are on the same page. Uh, ultimately, our goal is to remove the IT challenges that you have. IT is always is a tool and with any tool there are challenges. We want to try and move it, remove as many of those challenges as possible so that ultimately you know, we all face lots of other challenges outside of IT, so we want to enable you to be able to spend more time working on all those initiatives and, and opportunities and challenges you have um, so that you can be more adaptable to those um, those issues that we all face outside of the world. So and when you put all that together, you know, our clients achieve four times more value and productivity from their IT investments. We actually have some measurables around that and there's more, way more we could go into that, but we're not here to talk about that today. However, if you would like to have a deeper conversation about what that might look for you and how we achieve those goals with you. Um, we'd be happy to have a conversation. So just let us know and we'll, we'll, we'll reach out and set a time to chat. So, but that's not why you're here. So let's move on. Here we go. Let's dig in. We're going to review some of the common challenges and then some of the capabilities that exist in Microsoft 365. All right. So here's the point where I say, uh, and be, you know, you're not in a room in front of other people, so you don't have to worry about feeling embarrassed or anything. But this is where I like, look, be, be, um, uh, honest with yourself and with each other and how many of you have faced these kind of challenges, right? Where you've emailed documents in the past is kind of the topic of this conversation uh, to elicit feedback. And then the feedback that you get is uh, now you are the ultimate responsible one for merging all that feedback back into the source document or the document that you're trying to collaborate or elicit collaboration. So <laughs> a lot of people, uh, I think uh, that that one's resonating because that was the you know title of this conversation. Um, how many of you have tried to either share a document with one person or a small group of people where you're really just trying to collaborate 
before it might be in the wild. Like maybe you're creating a document and you don't want to put it out there publicly um, to be able to have other people access like on a network drive or something like that. But yet you want to make sure that it's still backed up, uh, but you want to be able to collaborate effectively with a couple of people. Um, how many of you run into the problem where uh, you're, you, you know, I know this is one that we used to run into in, in, in advance of our weekly meeting when we used to use an Excel spreadsheet individually to track that. Um, people were trying to put in their data or put it, update their metrics or things like that, or just trying to open up a document um, that might be a document template and you get the error. Sorry, this file is locked by this user or, you know, locked for use by this person. Uh, I imagine we've all experienced uh, that challenge. So uh, we're going to see that that challenge is uh, some of the stuff we're going to talk about today will make that challenge go away. Uh, the other challenges that sometimes we have is when we're trying to collaborate with a team. Um, so maybe it's the um, operations team or the finance team or whatever the team is you're you're collaborating on, where it's just something inside of that or that that team, and you want us to just collaborate with them. We'll show you some different ways to do that. Um, and then finally, one of the common challenges for those of you who haven't participated in one of our client immersion experience events, which we haven't been holding for about six months now because of um, everyone, you know, work operating remotely and virtually. But for the last two and a half years, we were executing these events once a month where we'd bring people in and um, we'd sit them down in front of a demo environment and we'd walk them through some of the same stuff we're talking today, just in a half day setting and in a, in a real interactive session. And Every single one of those sessions, I'm not kidding, every single one of those sessions, someone brought up this problem, which is I've got document templates that I want to have for my organization. And my challenge is because of the way, because they're on the network drive and now I'm working remotely, that people end up copying that document and saving it to their local desktop. And so now their local desktop version that they keep using is out of date with the one that I actually want them to use because I re revised it and published it differently, but now they're not using the new the new version of it. So now you've got different template uh, revisions out in the organization. So uh, we're going to show you a method that, that we found that works to not only keep those source documents uh, separate to so you can iterate them, but as well as a way in which you can publish the final product um, and make it easy for your team to be able to access those templates to mitigate, I can't necessarily prevent them from doing it, but to at least mitigate them from saving it to their local desktop and then having their version and the, the authorized version be out of date or, or out of sync. So, all right, so those are some of the common challenges. I'm hoping that at least one of those resonated with the folks that are listening now or that are listening in the future to the recording, uh, because these are some of the topics that we're gonna be addressing today as far as how to, how to address them. So, um, all right, so these are some of the common challenges. The next one, I wanna hit on some of the capabilities. You know, first of all, we're, we're gonna walk through, basically, let's talk about just for now, sharing internal documents. A lot of the concepts we are gonna share, uh, talk about today do, apply and you can actually share these externally. Uh, however, uh, the specific permissions of your organization and the way your Microsoft environment is set up needs to allow that. So by default, Microsoft shuts that down. So if you haven't specifically and intentionally turned it on, uh, some of the everything we're talking about today is really only going to be applicable internally. So I wanted to make sure to touch on that. Um, uh, so secondly, one of the things that there are different options to multi-user edit. So if you get multiple people being able to access the same document and edit the same document, there might be different ways that you want to prescribe, which is one of the reasons why we say we recommend prescribing the desired method for eliciting feedback. Um, we're actually going to show you that and being able to, for instance, use comments versus real-time editing. And I'm not saying one is right versus the other, but be aware of those and so that you are getting the type of feedback in the way in which you'd like it. So we'll talk about that too. Uh, finally, then the version control, that kind of the document template comment uh, challenge that we were mentioning is how do you keep track of the, um, the source document from which you want to iterate, but yet you don't want the iterations until they're approved to be released for publication? How can you maybe organize your, your, um, your structure for that? And finally, this is always a public service announcement that I always like to uh, touch on whenever we talk about Microsoft 365 and documents going into SharePoint into your Teams environment, for example, is that don't forget to back up your Microsoft 365. If you're a MyTech client, um, uh, you we we do that. That's as part of the program uh, that we have you on. Uh, so that's just that's just included. But if you don't have a third party backup, if you're not a MyTech client right now, it's something that I would definitely double check to make sure you do have your Microsoft environment backed up because Things do get deleted on accident. Things do get changed on accident. Um, and Microsoft only keeps 14 days of history 
Um, so if something changed 15 days ago or got deleted 15 days ago and you didn't catch it, it's gone unless you have a third party backup. So I want that's a public service announcement uh, relative to Microsoft 365. Okay, uh, with those uh, that foundation and ground set, we are going to move on to the demonstration portion of which is the meat of the content. So the, the core part of the content. So I'm going to open my Teams environment. So uh, if you notice uh, over here, I'm uh, I've selected the chat section of Teams. OK, so I'm going to start uh, with if you're just trying to share a document and collaborate on a document with, say, one person. So for instance, I've chosen Stephanie here um, and I've actually just uh, earlier I uploaded this document uh, quarterly review agenda template. Um, one of the things I like to illustrate as far as a foundation of, of, of this is um, when you've uploaded the document into chat, there's two places you need to be aware that it goes. Um, well, it goes into one place, but you can access it from multiple places. So um, for instance, if you go to the file section of chat, so that document that I just shared with her, um, which it's weird, it's actually not showing up here, even though I just, it was there just a minute ago. Um, See what I'm talking about, Stephanie? That's weird. The quarterly review agenda. I just added this and it should be in the files. Yeah, it's showing. There it we go. Me. Sorry. There, <laughs> it's there. So for some reason it didn't refresh. It, it, it hadn't loaded fully. So here's the document that I'm talking about. So it's in the chat and in the files. Um, the, the other area that when you share a document into chat and uh, I'm going to pull up my my file folder here and I'm going to pull. It's not I'm in a demo environment, so it's actually not going to show it here. But one of the things if you're in your OneDrive, so like for instance, if you see inside of your company on your file folder, so you know you're probably used to network drives, things like that. But inside of your OneDrive, so if you have your OneDrive dash company name, whatever your company name is, you should see a folder if you've ever shared a single document into a chat inside of Teams. Any of the documents that you have shared will show up here in this Microsoft Teams chat files folder. That is not a folder that you create. That is a folder that the moment you share your first document into a Teams chat, that folder gets created. So um, I wanted to illustrate that because um, one of the challenges when you share a document inside a chat is that if Stephanie went to her Microsoft Teams chat files inside of her OneDrive, she would actually not see this document here that I just shared because I shared the document. So the document actually goes into my OneDrive and it shares to Stephanie so Stephanie can have access to it. Uh, but this, do this does not go into her OneDrive. It only goes into mine. Now, if Stephanie shares the document, vice versa, um, the document will, she can share it with me and I will see it here, but I will not see it in my chat files because she is the one that shared that document. So I want to illustrate this because the um, when you share a document in the Teams section, and I'll show you that here really quick. <clears throat> so when you share a document inside of Teams, and I'll give you an illustration of that. So when you're in Teams, and so for instance, I use this document, I share this document inside of Teams. It you can still access it in files. You'll see that, right? But you also access it when I click open in SharePoint. You'll notice that the file actually goes into SharePoint. So that's where that priority task document went. So I'm gonna go back to my teams to illustrate that. So you'll see, I shared this in the all MTP365 group, this priority test document I shared in, um, in the team's posts. So I shared the document here and that document does not go into my Microsoft um, OneDrive, it goes into SharePoint. So the, the key thing that I want to make sure that everyone takes away is that if you share it, if you share documents in a chat, it goes into your OneDrive dash company name in a folder that Microsoft creates for you called Microsoft Teams chat files. So just know that that's where documents exist. But if you share a document into the Teams and into any team inside of uh, in, uh, inside of the Teams uh, application, thank you Microsoft for calling the subset of the application the same thing as the application itself. Uh, in, in a team, it actually shows up in the share the associated SharePoint site for that group. So I just want to make sure that there's it's a little foundation um, technical awareness um, of where those documents live and where they're stored. Uh, ultimately, they're still backed up if you have a third party backup um, because it all it all syncs to the cloud one way or the other. But I just want to make sure you're aware of that. So now that we've got that foundation done, I'm going to go back into the team section really quick. So um, into the in the chat here. So here uh, is an illustration. I can share uh, this document with Stephanie 
and just know where that goes. Um, the other thing you can do, so sometimes you maybe you want to share with a small group of people. Maybe you're collaborating with with you know two or more folks. Well, you can create um, like I created this this team here. It's just it, there's actually two people in it, and I called it the small short team project collaboration. So let's say I wanted to share a document with them. So what I can do is I can actually come down here and attach a file. Um, I can also go up here to the files and I can hit here to upload. Um, so this is another way to do it just to share so I can say upload from my computer. Um, so I have a thing here I call demonstration documents. I'm just going to grab this finance committee agenda document. So now it's going to upload this finance committee agenda document into the um, small group. It's done. I'm going to hit refresh here because um, you sometimes have to refresh for the document to show up. So now I've shared that here and then if I go back into the chat section, um, it shows that I have shared a file here too. So that is a way where I can share it with the group and then you know basically you can click on it here. Um, I'll just show the illustration. Click on it here. And it'll open the document. I just have a basic document with you know a header. That's all. So I opened it in inside of Teams. Notice it looks like it, I'm editing it into a Word doc because it's inside of the Teams window. But I'm going to close that um, just to illustrate. That's a couple different ways to share. So if I've got a small group that I'm working on that's a short term project, I might choose to collaborate here with them before I release it, release it into publication or launch it into operations, whatever that uh, whatever you might have it. Um, so I can do the same kind of thing with an individual here or a small group, which is basically inside of chat. It just depends on how you use it. Again, where I've shared both those files. So that's just an illustration of um, how you can collaborate um, with a small group of people. I'm um, gonna illustrate the ways of collaboration here in a little bit, but I didn't wanna, because um, it's all the same, whether you're sharing it inside of a chat or inside of a team, the way you collaborate is the same. Um, but I wanted to show you a couple different ways to start as far as if you're just trying to collaborate with a chat, like one or a small group of people. OK, so let's move on to sharing inside of a team. So I'm going to go to Teams. Uh, I'm going to go to the marketing channel. Actually here, um, as I've shared, as I have some documents. So I'm going to open up a new conversation, and I'm going to say um, uh, sharing and collaborating on an attached document. I'm actually going to hit this little. I like this little uh, format button. If you haven't seen this down here when you start a new conversation, I like the little format button because it gives me a little bit more information because I actually want to make this the subject. I actually want to add a subject there. So it, it gives me a subject and then I can say, um, hey, Stephanie, and I could at tag Stephanie too. So I'm going to at um, Stephanie, right? So I actually want to tag her so it'll give her a notification. Um, would you please um, help? review this document. OK, so. And if I could type, sorry, um, question mark and then I'll say thanks. Thanks. OK, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to attach a document, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come down here and attach. Um, so I'm going to click here, attach. I'm going to upload from my computer. Um, I uh, picking the other document that I have here for demonstration purposes. Um, so now notice what's happening is it's uploading as we speak. Um, the confusing thing that I've made this mistake before is I've uploaded and I waited for that little bar to populate and then I'm like, oh, I've uploaded it. Well, actually, no, you've uploaded it, but you haven't sent the message yet. So you actually got to come down here and click this little send button because uh, I've definitely done that before where I left a chat that was, wasn't was sent and I was expecting feedback and I wasn't getting any. Well, it's because I didn't actually send the message. So uh, after you upload the document, go ahead and click uh, send. So now that that message is sent, so this is uh, one way in which you can start sharing a document is by attaching it. Now what I'll show you is that this document now is going to show up in files. So the quarterly review agenda document. So the quarterly no, and gives you even a little indicator that this is new. This item is new. Um, and uh, so again, when I'm going to click at the open in SharePoint. So now this opens up the marketing team SharePoint. It also gives me a little indicator that this document is new here too. So this is the one I just shared by illustration. OK, so um, that's that's the way that you know where the document lives and how you've shared it. So uh, going back to the the conversation section of this team. So that's a way to be able to share a document that has been attached. Now, what if you've already uploaded one of the documents and uh, you want to collaborate on a document that already exists? Well, I'll show you how you can do that, too. 
So I'm going to click new conversation just for the sake of the, I'm going to actually hit the little format button here as well. And I'll say by um, sharing and collaborating on a linked document instead of an attached document. So then I'm going to say, uh, hey, um, I'll just say Gerald, uh, just to give you a different tag, just so you can see, hey, Gerald, um, even though I'm probably going to ask Stephanie to collaborate on this since she's on, <laughs> since she's joined right now, um, please help me uh, review and edit this document. So now what I'm going to do is instead of, um, instead of uh, attaching a document, I'm going to link this, this document here. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go into the files. I could do this in SharePoint or in Teams, either way, but I'm going to choose this one right here, the annual meeting agenda doc. So I'm going to go grab this. I'm going to click on the show action. So once you hover over it, notice the little breadcrumbs or the ellipse appear. So I'm going to click on that really quick and it gives me options. I'm going to copy the link. So I'm going to click link and it's going to be the choice, Teams or SharePoint. I don't think it matters. In fact, it doesn't really matter here. I always defer to the SharePoint link because uh, I don't know why, but because I think it just it opens up in SharePoint. I feel like ultimately Teams is a, a window into SharePoint. Uh, it's a way to view SharePoint. So I would rather kind of go to the source than the window, if that makes sense. So I, I usually def it doesn't I don't it doesn't matter. And you can try to see if it matters, try different ways if it matters or not. But ultimately, I'm going to click SharePoint and then I'm coming down here and hit copy. Right. So now what I've done is I've copied a link to this document. So I'm going to go back to the post that I did not send yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the words this document. Right. And then I'm going to there's a little icon right here that's called insert link. So I'm going to click on that button. And then all I need to do is paste. And notice it shows me the text to display and I'm going to hit insert. So now there's actually a link to this document. Um, that I can share. Now, I haven't clicked send yet, so I'm going to say thanks, Nate, right, just to finish it. I'm going to click send. So now we have two different conversations that are created. I've shared a document via attaching a document. I've shared an existing document and linked to it um, because you don't need to attach it again if it's already there. Um, either way works. And so now what I'd like to be able to illustrate is now I've showed you two different ways to add the document into a place to collaborate. And so I'd like to open up this document. Uh, no pun intended. Stephanie, thanks for commenting there. Um, so I'm going to open up this document. Um, here we go. So it's going to open that up in SharePoint. Um, so this is uh, just a, 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 a so track changes enabled. So that's interesting. So track changes is turned on. Um, so Stephanie opens that up. This is just like some test document here. And then um, the other thing that you can do is real time editing, but I'm also going to come over here and pop open this comments field um, because so that way what we can do. So I'm going to as Stephanie pops in here, um, hopefully I'll see her um, notice. I just see like Stephanie's little indicator here. So Stephanie has the document open too. And so in real time, Stephanie and I could be adding documents so like here is another bullet point that I would like to discuss, right? I could also say, oh, well, gosh, we need to add another person. So we need to get Gerald in here. So Gerald is going to be part of that. So notice it's it's adding the comment. It's tracking changes and it's saying who changed it. So that's actually a nice feature. Um, and notice so Stephanie's writing here in real time. So it gives me an indicator where her cursor is. So here's the blessing and the curse. For those of you who are probably already ahead of me on this, is that if you're doing real time editing like this, what if you don't want the edits that the people who you're collab whom, with whom you're collaborating are suggesting? Well, then you're going to have to go back and edit these things, right? It's like, oh no, I don't want this. So I got to, I got to go here and maybe try and delete that or something like that or cross it out. So what I would encourage, and one of the ways, well, it really depends. It depends on how you're working a document. Maybe you're trying to create a document in real time together. Well, then in that case, you're probably going to be multi both doing this real time kind of editing capability that we we're just illustrating. Stephanie and I are both in the same document, editing the same document at the same time. And you can kind of see where each of us respectively are. Now, if you don't want that to happen, again, this is what we mean by prescribing. We recommend 
uh, when you ask for collaboration, when you ask for feedback from with whom you're collaborating with, tell please instruct them how would you like them to elicit feedback? Would you like them to just start typing in any suggestions that they have or um, say, I would recommend, would you please use the comment feature? Say, OK, so um, Michelle requests final approval and navigation structure from Jim. I'm like, uh, maybe I highlight this. I can hit a new comment here. I can say, um, is Jim the right person? Or should additional people be in the loop? Question mark. So what I like about this, and so I got to click send, so now I've sent that as a comment, and if, if I'm collaborating on Stephanie or members of the team, I can actually get notifications of, hey, if Stephanie comments on this, I'll actually get a notification. Stephanie replied to a comment on a, on a document that you're editing. So you can actually, you don't have to be editing the document in the, at the same time, because if you're asking for feedback from a team, unless you're all scheduling a meeting at the same time for you to edit, you're probably not gonna be editing at the same time. So, so for instance, Stephanie then was able to comment on that, um, and without having to edit the document per se, but then if she's editing at a different time, she can comment on it. And then I get a notification actually um, that says, hey, Stephanie uh, reacted to a comment, um, et cetera. I can highlight other areas, um, uh, gather requirements. Um, we should also uh, pull in, and I'm gonna actually at tag Gerald, for example, I'm gonna tag Gerald um, to make sure that we are gathering Requirements, requirements. So, um, and of course, I spelled requirements wrong. I need to put an E in there. Um, and then the other thing is, you notice because I tagged Gerald, I can actually say, do I want to assign this to Gerald? And actually, um, it creates a little assignment. It, it kind of gives a to-do to Gerald. So I'm going to do that, and then I hit send. So now I've actually not only created a note, I've tagged Gerald so he gets a notification and kind of given him a to-do to make sure that he's got that on his list of, of actions to take to help us with this document. So that's one of the things I like about... I, I prefer um, for most document collaboration to use the comments feature as we just illustrated. But again, ultimately, we just want to show you that there's multiple ways to do it. Be aware of the way that you want so that you can prescribe and request that as you're doing the multi-user document editing. So great, thank you. And uh, Gerald's not on the call right now, so Gerald's giving the thumbs up via Stephanie. So thanks, Stephanie, for that. Okay, so there's one last thing I want to show you that takes this to uh, a next level of um, and don't worry if this is not something you feel you're ready for as a team yet because this is a little bit of uh, another layer of kind of evolution or maturity or, or operational functions that uh, might take some additional process to define internally so i'm going to go ahead and close this document um, so thank you stephanie for that editing um, and of course i didn't have to click save because it auto saves um, but i'm going to go back to teams and one of the things I'm going to solve, I'm going to give you a way in which we've worked to solve the document template problem. So um, uh, I'm going to go to the change advisory board that we've created this team that our managers are part of, and this is in our demo environment, but I'm going to give an example of, uh, so we created a client engagement channel. Um, I've got some files in here. So uh, I'm actually going to take um, this uh, Make IT Easy Review um, guide, and I'm going to open that up in Word. So I'm just going to open, and then I'm going to open in the app. It's just I, I usually prefer you can open it up in Teams. You can open it up in SharePoint in the browser. I typically prefer to open it up in the Word uh, app. We just showed you what it was like in the browser. It's very similar, um, but this is an example of where, hey, we've made comments. Uh, notice there's a comment over here, so I can actually come up here and say, yep, this is good. Uh, we resolved that, so I can kind of cross that out that that's done. Um, and let's say for the sake of this conversation that we're ready to publish this document. So, okay, so we've had the comments, we've edited it. We as a team uh, have decided um, that, uh, yep, this is ready to be ratified. This is ready to be the new template that we're going to use. Again, I, I started this in Q2. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and do a file, and I'm going to do a save as. So save a copy. And it automatically goes change advisory board shared documents client engagement so she goes to the same space in which i was editing the document but i'm going to do this little drop down because ultimately what i'm ready to do i'm going to publish this document um, to the team but the, one of the things we've been talking about is by default when you share a document inside of this environment anyone can edit the document so anyone who's got access to the document basically has editing capabilities so um, there's a couple different ways to solve that problem I'm going to recommend in this instance, I'm going to create a Word template. So I'm going to save it as a document template. So I'm going to select the Word template. So it's a DOTX extension. And I'm going to click Save. And so now that it saves that, 
uh, I'm going to go ahead and close this document. So I can go back and I'll probably have to hit refresh because that's just the way this this. Um, Mm, here it is. So sorry, I was trying to find refresh. But hit refresh here. So now um, that document exists. So this is the document, right? Shows as new. And then what I'm going to do is like, but this isn't the place. This is only the where the the you know the right people are collaborating on on the tool on the document. So I'm going to actually hit this button again, the the breadcrumbs, and I'm going to click move. So uh, it's, it, actually, this makes it really easy to do this. So I'm in the client engagement folder. I don't want it there. Um, I don't want it inside of the change advisory board. I want it in the all company folders because I want everyone in the company to have access to this. So here I go. I'm in the all company team. I can navigate to the all company team. I'm going to click that and it's going to go into our general channel. So I'm going to save this document. I'm going to move this document to this channel here. So I just click move. And so this document now uh, um, is moved so that there it's gone. Um, but what happens is, and this is a key point, is that the source document which is the most recent right now at this moment, it's the it's the same as the most recent document that you've published. However, because it's the source document, it's also the place from which you need to edit or iterate further, right? If you're going to edit or iterate further, let's start from where you're at. So, um, so this document stays here as the source guide so that what I can do if I wanted to is I could go in there and edit and add comments that could be saved or waited on for approval before we choose to approve and publish the next iteration or the next version of that document. So um, that stays here, but I moved the production version. So I'm going to go over here and uh, now I'm going to go into the, the all company files that I mentioned. And uh, so this now this document is here, but now everyone on our team has access to it. Everyone has access to the template, but because it's a document template, they can't accidentally overwrite it or edit something, right? How many of you, okay, moment of truth, how many of you actually have people on your team for a document template accidentally save the document, like edit the document and save it for a, a template for, for the purpose they're using and now it updated the template. So everyone now has to re-edit it. So by saving it as a document template, another choice is maybe editing as a, um, saving it as a PDF. That might be another option for you. But for this purpose, I want our team to be able to edit this by doing a save as, and now they can save it as and, and edit as they wish, but they can't edit the document template. So that's a quick um, kind of a template revision, uh, like approve the revision, publish the revision, make it a document template and put it into a public place. But the last step, which I think is really key to helping your team make it easy for them to hopefully not save that document to their local desktop is to sync that document. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to open this up in SharePoint just to illustrate the point. Even though I know this sync button exists here, uh, I find that um, it works more. Cons I, I've had it not work consistently inside of um, Teams. So what you can do here is notice this is the document. If you just click sync, all you have to do is click sync right here. I've already clicked it, but I'll click it again to illustrate. Um, so it's trying to open up OneDrive. I'll say yes, that's fine. Um, and it, it'll say, hey, it's ready to go or it's already done because I've already synced it. Now, I'll give you an example. So my file explorer, so I have synced this. So in my Contoso, so this is when you're syncing from your corporate SharePoint, it's it's going to go into the, it looks like a little building icon. If you don't have this little building icon with your company name next to it, Contoso is the demo environment that Microsoft allows us to use. Uh, if you don't have your uh, a building icon next to your and a company name next to it, that means that you're not yet syncing anything from your corporate SharePoint sites. Once you have synced your first folder from any corporate SharePoint site, you're going to see this. So um, to illustrate what we've done is that here's the all company, right? All, all MTP 365. So now I can click on this and that template is now available to me in my file explorer and available to me in my SharePoint. But if you're trying to make it easy for your team to have quick access to this, like say from a laptop, no matter where they are, just have them sync that folder, which will sync the files. And now they have access to their document templates no matter where they go. Uh, it doesn't prevent them from necessarily saving it to their desktop, but it does actually make it easier for them to access the most current information. And when you ever update this document, it will always sync back and forth. And so they, if they always go here, they will always have the latest and greatest document templates um, that you're prescribing for your organization. Okay, so that I know I'm a little bit over, so forgive me. Uh, I didn't go uh, as fast as I, um, I didn't speak as fast as I usually do, um, but uh, so packed in some content here. So first of all, here's the summary. Like I like to put together at least one page summary of, look, for your internal sharing of documents, there's chat, teams and their channels and SharePoint. 
Uh, there's different ways to multi-user edit. You can do it in Teams, like I mentioned. I didn't show you that, but I mentioned it in the browser or in the application. Uh, prescribe the way in which you'd like to uh, edit, like track changes. Do you want it in real time or do you want people to use the comments feature? Um, and then version control, right? That's what I was kind of illustrating there at the end is you might want to have a separate section where your source uh, documents live and when you publish them, you publish the finished uh, uh, approved document to a public place where everyone has access. And then finally, be aware of the backup. So I would like to comment on that. So uh, recommended next action items. First of all, it, again, it's understand the purpose of the document that you're trying to collaborate or the collaboration you're trying to in, uh, employ. Does it make sense to do it one-on-one -on -one with a chat or in a group chat or in a team environment? Are you trying to um, do the, 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 the document template iteration where you kind of need a little bit more of a formal process to iterate and approve and publish, um, but just align the way you're editing and the way you're asking for the type of feedback and the collaboration to the respective way that makes the most sense for you. And if any of these, I, I would recommend if the, any of these resonated with you or there's things you'd like to try, try to take some baby steps in the next 24 to 48 hours, especially because for those of you watching later, uh, it's Thanksgiving in a couple days. And if you don't try and get this written down now, maybe try some of it uh, by, by come Monday, uh, uh, we're all probably uh, gonna have a little bit shorter term memory uh, from this information. But don't worry, it's recorded, so get that later. Then I would say join us for future virtual sessions. We've got them published on our website, um, as well as if you'd like to go deeper with Microsoft 365, um, just kind of virtually raise your hand and reach out to us. We'd be happy to set up a conversation to see how we may or may not be able to help um, and maybe give you some suggestions. Uh, we do leadership train the trainer sessions. Um, and so we've got, we've got lots of ways in which we might be able to help you, but um, stay tuned for those future events. And lastly, uh, again, thanks for attending. You know, like or follow us on Facebook. That's where we do a lot of announcements of this information. We, of course, send those emails out. But also, if you're watching these videos on YouTube, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel. Stephanie's done a great job of actually building a, um, God, what's it called? It's, um, is it a channel? It's not a channel, but basically a, bit, a playlist. Thank you. It's a playlist that allows you to, um, she tees up the different um, topics that are related to each other so that it, they, you'll see multiple of those together if that's something that's of interest to you too. So for those of you who have to drop off now, again, forgive me, I ran a little over, but hopefully we got valuable content to you. Um, so thank you very much for showing up and attending and watching. Uh, for those of you who can stick around a little longer and open it up for questions, uh, let's open it up for questions. So thank you very much. Awesome. Thanks, Nate. There's no questions in the Q&A panel right now, so if anybody has questions, feel free to post them and uh, we'll give you a couple minutes to get those in and we'll definitely get them asked. All right, very good. Well, um, while you're asking those questions, so please get something out there. I'd love to be able to go a little deeper on any of this stuff. Um, I'll go back into, uh, into Teams and one of the things I do like to illustrate again and reinforce is the ability to link these documents um, because you can also, I know I, the title of this session is stop emailing documents, um, but uh, this is also a way you don't have to use uh, Teams channels, even though I definitely recommend it, is because you can, you know, you basically group these by conversations. Um, but sometimes it might make sense if you're sending out um, an email to people, uh, if it, you can also do the exact same type of linking that I illustrated here. So instead of emailing the document, like by attaching the document to an email, you can do the same thing here where you've already got a document that lives in SharePoint and you can actually just do the exact same kind of linking that I illustrated here by going into the files section and you can then, um, once you hover over the document, you can click on the breadcrumbs and say, copy the link. You choose what kind of link you want. I want a SharePoint link, hit copy. And now if I'm sending an email, I can paste that link uh, into an email that could also be collaborated in the same way because it points back to the same file. So again, uh, and that might be a way that you could do it if you're collaborating externally. So if you've permissioned access to an, uh, an area of your SharePoint or an area of your OneDrive that does allow external access, um, using that link capability is one of the ways that you can extend the same, same methodology that we just employed, uh, but accept, share it with those outside of your organization too. Any questions pop up with that little extra nugget there, Stephanie? Nope, no questions today. All right, well, um, maybe it's uh, the, the preparation in advance of uh, Thanksgiving. Um, people want to get on with their week. So uh, I want to say thank you everyone for watching. You know, with everything going on in the world right now, stay safe and healthy and take care of uh, yourself and those around you. It's really important right now. And um, just, you know, thanks for your support. And you know, if there's anything you feel that we can do to help, please let us know. And if there's any other content that you feel 
maybe even your team might be struggling with relative to adopting some of these tools. If there's content that we don't have out there that you think that you would appreciate or want to see, please let us know. Uh, we'd love to collaborate with you and help and maybe get some additional content out there. So in the meantime, everyone have a very happy Thanksgiving. Uh, stay safe out there and we look forward to talking to you again soon.